Hi everyone, my name is Amber and I'm an educator with the McHenry County Conservation District and today I'm going to be taking you guys on a virtual prairie walk. So we'll be going to some of our different conservation areas and checking out what is in bloom and I'll be giving some tips and tricks on how to identify some of these prairie plants that are out in our areas and maybe give you some fun historical facts about them too. Let's go! This beautiful flower here is wild bergamot. It grows about three to five feet tall and has this bright purple flower with these spindly tube-like structures on top. If you were to crush this plant, you would get a citrusy mint aroma of the leaves and the flower head. Um, that is because it is in the mint family. How you can tell it's in the mint family is that it has a square stem. This is a great pollinator plant, as you can see all the uh, insects buzzing around it. Uh, historically, this plant was used in a tea to treat chills, fevers, headaches, and sore throats. And after the Boston Tea Party, this plant was widely used as a tea substitute as imported teas were hard to come by. This is gray-headed coneflower. It is related to the purple coneflower. It grows up to be about five feet tall, and each flower head has a yellow ray-like flower that droops downward and surrounds the cone-shaped disc. Before the flower actually opens up, the small disc flowers are ashy gray in color, so hence the name gray-headed coneflower. Historically, this plant was used to make a tea, but not really a tea you would use for sicknesses or ailments. This tea was more to drink for leisure and pleasure. This is purple coneflower. It's also known as echinacea. It's a showy plant that grows up to about four feet tall. It has a large flower head that contains these reddish purple ray-like flowers that surround the cone-shaped bristle disc. It's a very beautiful, beautiful flower. Now historically, this plant has been used to treat all types of ailments such as snake bites, bee stings, headaches, toothaches, and sore throats. It's also been used to treat cold and flu-like symptoms. We actually use echinacea still today in our teas to ease our cold and flu-like symptoms. You can go pretty much into any store and probably be able to find some teas that have echinacea in them. So this very tall plant is cut plant. It can grow up to be about eight feet tall. The flower heads at the very top are these bright yellow ray-like petals that create a sunflower look to it. The leaves are cupped around the square stems and they are cupped so tight around the stem that they can actually hold rainwater, so hence the name cup plant. Historically, this plant was used as a smoke treatment and by inhaling the fumes of the plant, it would alleviate head colds and tooth pains. This striking plant here is butterfly weed. It has a brilliant orange flower that grows in a cluster of flowers that create the flower head. It's in the milkweed family, so many pollinators such as the monarch caterpillar and monarch butterfly heavily rely on this flower for survival. What else is cool about the butterfly weed plant is that it has a very long tap root that allows it to grow deep into the ground and so that allows it to survive and do very well in well-drained soil or very sandy areas. Now, historically, indigenous cultures used the fibers of this plant to create cords and rope. And in the late 19th century, American physicians used this plant to treat smallpox. So here we have one of the more widely known wildflowers, um, and this is common milkweed. So most people recognize milkweed by the wide fuzzy leaves that grow on the stem and also by the purple florette like flowers that kind of dangle off the top. So milkweed is known for having the milky sap inside the stem, the leaves and the roots. If you were to pick a piece of the leaf off the stem, you will notice the milky sap will run down the stem and will also be coming out of the leaf. This is also widely known as a great pollinator attracting plant to have. So again, just like the butterfly weed, this is a great pollinator plant for um, monarch caterpillars and monarch butterflies, but also as well for bees and ants and all other kinds of animals um, that rely on this plant. Milkweed has a rich history. Europeans would use the cotton-like seeds 
to stuff their mattresses and pillows if they couldn't afford to have um, feathers. And also, there's a latex substance in the milkweed sap that acts like an instant bandage. So when applying the juice or that sap, that sap onto the skin, it will form a tough adhesive film, and then they could use that to cover up wounds and ulcers. This is compass plant. It's another very tall prairie plant that can get up to about eight feet in height. The flower heads consist of these bright yellow petals that sit in a ray-like formation on top of these very long and hairy stalks. Compass plant is identified by the deeply cut basal leaves that are commonly oriented in a north to south direction, so hence the name compass plant. Historically, certain indigenous tribes avoided this plant believing that it attracted lightning. However, other Native American Indians would use the root of this plant to alleviate head colds or other pains. This plant here is prairie dock. The flower heads have yellow ray-like petals that sit on top of a smooth, nearly leafless stalk. The stalk also has a shiny essence to it. This is another tall prairie plant and it can grow up to about 10 feet in height. The leaves are large and spade shaped that grow towards the bottom of the plant. The leaves also have a rough texture and have coarse teeth that run along the edges. Native American Indians would use this plant as a tea for coughs and asthma and other types of lung ailments. I hope you enjoyed learning about some of the prairie plants that you can find growing out at our conservation sites. I encourage you to go out and see these plants for yourself. Just remember to stay on the trail and not to pick any of the plants that you see. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time.